and welcome to this first video of what I hope to be one video a week. <clears throat> My name's Mike and I like tinkering with old kit like that and newish kit like that. For this first video though I have this problem when I bought this shuttle XPC very cheap off eBay this power supply that came with it, <coughs> excuse me, is faulty. It just doesn't work at all. And luckily, I have another power supply from another shuttle machine that's working. And the machine powers on with 8 gigabytes of RAM. As you can see there, one, two sticks. And the processor is an Intel Core 2 Duo. No, sorry, it's a Core 2 Quad Q6600 at 2.6 GHz, I think. So not a bad spec machine. I put an SSD in. It's got a CD-ROM drive. ID, of course, so I can image my old Atari and Amiga disks. And I have a black floppy drive coming by eBay. So the problem I've got, as you can see is it boots to the BIOS screen, the splash screen, tries to boot from CD, which there isn't one, so it boots into Windows. What you will also see is, eventually, focus it reboots. Voila. So let's turn it off. So I have a feeling, let me put the, uh, the light on, the problem is down to these capacitors. I don't know if you can see that, let me see if I can zoom in. Oh look, bulgy bulgy. So, I think something's overheating. That capacitor does it. I can show you in there. That capacitor does it as well. And there is another one on the opposite side of that copper heatsink that's also bulging. So what I have done is I have bought compatible capacitors. And I'm going to try to see if I can fix the motherboard. So I'll come along for the ride and see what happens. Okay, <clears throat> so, excuse me, there was something I wasn't expecting. The motherboard doesn't come out even with that one, that one, and four on that side with the screws being removed because <clears throat> the heat pipe spreader, as you can see, goes through to the bottom of the board and into the case. So I've taken the case as much of as I can off, and then I've unscrewed this, and the heat pipe comes off like that. And that is the heat pipe. Excuse the Atari ST in the background. There's one there, one there. This one is an Atari ST case with a Raspberry Pi. And this one is an original 520 ST, uh, STE that I've upgraded to four megabytes with a dual toss switch. And I shall be showcasing that in a future video. So this needs cleaning, minging. Okay, so, I have checked the motherboard out. It looks pretty good. <clears throat> I think it could well just be the caps are not retaining the capacitance enough. So I'll replace those. But also, I took the CPU out to give it a nice clean. Check the pins in the socket. They seem okay. And at the same time, marked on the board... There, 
there and there where the capacitors go. So let me get the soldering iron on and we'll try and desolder these and see what happens. And voila. I turn the camera that way around so you can see a bit better. The motherboard is out. So from what I can see, that cap, that cap, and that cap are all bulging. Every other capacitor seems to be nice and flat with no real issue. But I can check properly because then 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 I have a proper magnifying system. Can you see that? Does it work through there? Let's turn that back that way. Oh no. My finger was over the camera. Sorry guys. See? Bulgy. 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 Right. So, I'm going to now take the memory off. Here. So, two nice brand new 8 gigabytes of RAM. DDR3. 20, um, 800 megahertz. 26666, I think it said it was, or 266, maybe. Let's see. What that is, that's okay there. That looks okay there. That looks okay there. It could do with a brush. It looks very, uh, very dusty. And the chip could do with a good clean as well. But on the other side, that looks fairly good. I've got some switch cleaner that I might. See that there looks a bit uh, a bit ganky. Looks like maybe a bit of water damage. There's definitely something down this outside strip. And down this side too. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. <clears throat> I'll do some investigation and I'll be right back. As you can see, if I can do on the video, I'll post a little snippet. The mark, the white mark, is pointing this way. Which means, this white mark has to go that way. I'll make sure I get the polarity correct on these, otherwise Bob's your uncle, bye bye motherboard. Right, I'm going to try and solder it now. Bye, see you in a bit. Okay. One bulging capacitor. Ooh. It does look like it's bulging. And the bottom actually it does look like it's come out. Look, it's all brown and horrible. Right, let's put a replacement one in, see what happens. Solder station set at 345 degrees centigrade I think it's centigrade yes it says C that's fine so that should be hot enough I've got my solder flux my solder wick and my 6040 solder with a rosin core so that should be good enough <clears throat> right I will do or I'll try to do the first one and then report back once that's done wish me luck Ooh, after a bit of an effort, the new one is in. And ready for soldering. Okay, so I just thought I'd show you the process that came out. All nice and clean. Q6600 
Core 2 Quad. 2.4 gigahertz. Should be completely fast enough for what I need. Which is not much really. Writing CDs. Writing um, Atari ST images from .st file to floppy disk so I can use them on my Atari. And generally just old retro things. It'll be my go-to machine for testing out retro games under Windows 10, believe it or not. I know I should be using Windows XP, but I've got a fresh license of Windows 10. Didn't cost much at all. So I thought I'd bang it on as it works on this motherboard. Anyway, on to the soldering. Okay, so after five or ten minutes work, new capacitor new capacitor new capacitor nice and flat now <clears throat> the question is will it power up this is the next step be right back well it boots but obviously there's no disc so, can we do control alt delete get into the BIOS Oh, the noise you can hear by the way is the fan in the power supply is dead noisy So, it's got that, let's look at boot, USB zip, CD-ROM, hard disk, does it not look as though there's a USB drive in, maybe those down there haven't connected properly and I might have to check the ribbon cable, but let's try this again and see what happens. Oh, and look at that. It's booting into the Windows 10 setup. Now, it did that before, but it reset after 30 seconds. So hopefully now, this won't reset, and it will go all the way through the Windows 10 setup. So we'll wait and we'll see what happens. I expect the swirly bit to come here. And then, hopefully... We'll have Windows 10. There, swirly bit. Not a problem. This is brilliant. I won't show you the Windows 10 install and activation. But I'll come back when it's installed and show you it running. Bye bye for now. Look. It's got to the formatting of the hard drive stage. I think I've fixed this with this cap replacement. Proper happy. Keep you posted. See you in a while. So, finally, I've managed to get it working. It took a while, but everything's in. The 128 gig SSD, the floppy drive, you can see that. The CD-ROM drive. Interesting CD-ROM drive. One of the only compatible ones that's able to read a Wii disk. Can't remember where I got it from, eBay probably many many years ago, but I used to use it to back up all my Wii discs to ISO. And Windows 10. Working, activated, updating on a shuttle Glamour XPC that I paid £15 for on eBay because it wasn't working and it was sold as having a Core 2 Duo processor when in fact it does have a Core 2 Quad running at 2.4 GHz. So, 4 GB of RAM. Now looking at that, I should have bought 8 GB and I think I selected the wrong auction on eBay. So, not happy about that, but at least it still works and I do need to fix the faulty power supply. That I think will be a next video, so tune in to see whether I can get the power supply resurrected. 
And if not, I have an alternative cheap one on my watch list on eBay that I'll have to purchase to get my machine working properly. Thanks everybody for watching. If you like this video and you want to see some more, subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the thumbs up button and the bell notification so that you know when I've uploaded some more videos. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Hey, hey, hey.